my name is Taylor Herman. I am originally from the East Coast of the United States. I graduated from ESMT in September of 2019, so almost graduated now. And I'm currently located in Nuremberg in Southern Germany as a um, full-time junior marketing manager for the sports style department at Puma. I am involved in all of the marketing material that the Puma sports style department relays to regions all over the world. So essentially I market all the products that are non-performance related. So within Puma, there are different business units. We abbreviate that to be used. So for example, we have team sport, motor sport, golf, Puma hoops, running and training. And I sit within sports style and I'm involved with developing the marketing plans for these products that then the regions all over the world kind of pick and choose from um, basically what applies best to their market. So I not only develop the plans, but then after the plans are developed, I make sure that they're executed properly within each market. I will divide this kind of into two parts. So basically, why did I decide to get a master's degree? This mostly came from, I think my father, who mostly inspired me to do this. He didn't go to college. Um, however, he started his own very successful roofing company in the US um, when I was growing up. So I could see how hard he was working. Um, and it really inspired me. He would always give me kind of pep talks on when I'm older, how I should, you know, everyone can be a manager, but not everyone can be a leader. You really need to work hard and follow your dreams, et cetera, et cetera. So this was very inspiring to me. And so I knew that I wanted to maybe pursue that education that he could um, and do it in a way where I could be that manager and leader combination that he said was really, really important in order to be successful in the future. So I knew that I always wanted to get my master's. However, I didn't know that I would come to Europe to do that. And that was mostly inspired by my study abroad experience that I had during my bachelor's. I had spent half a year in London and that was the first time that I had even left the East Coast of the United States. So I really wasn't cultured. However, I really wanted to push myself outside of my comfort zone, see what it was like outside of Wilmington, North Carolina, which is a very small little beach town. Like it's <laughs> extremely small. Everyone that's there stays there forever because it's a beautiful place to live. I don't blame them. But I knew that there was a little more out there. So went to London, traveled all around Europe. I was really intrigued by talking with people from different cultures, hearing all of their different perspectives. It was really testing my communication skills. And I picked up that, okay, to become a good manager or leader, I need to also be able to communicate well with cross-cultural teams. So I went back to the US after that experience, started researching all these different master's programs and came across ESMT Berlin which offered everything that I was looking for. Not only offered international experience, but it was particularly for international students. So there were different nationalities coming to this university. It also offered a lot of practical experience. Then I could actually practice what I was learning or applying what I was learning um, and try and get my foot in the door into the industry that I hopefully would want to pursue my career in. And that was also the fashion and lifestyle industry. Um, so that's why Berlin was also very intriguing to me because Berlin is very creative. It allows a lot of freedom of expression. Um, and so I knew that ESMT kind of checked off all the boxes that I was looking for. So I took the GMAT when I was home, um, studied for that for about four or five months, really was trying to make sure I could, I could get into the program and then applied to ESMT. And when I got in, it was a, a blessing basically because it was easily the best thing that's that I could have ever done both personally and professionally and so yeah then I ended up here in um two years ago basically my experience at ESMT was easily the best decision I could have made in my life and I'm not just saying this because we're on the call it really it was a huge growing experience for me. So moving over across the Atlantic Ocean by myself in itself was a huge growing opportunity. Then moving into a country where they don't speak English, 
was a huge test. But ESMT itself really helped me personally as far as I was interacting with over 40 different nationalities in my class. So it's very group work heavy, which was good because I was able to test my communication skills because coming from the Southern part of the US, like it, you don't get that. And it was super important for me because I knew I wanted to be a manager one day that I would have that skill set to be able to communicate with different people besides people just like me, essentially. Um, so personally, I became a lot more open-minded. Um, I became a lot more, I think, patient with understanding how different people communicated. Um, and then professionally, I was able to, yeah, expand my skill set for sure through our courses, but also applying those skills into a practical experience. So during my internship phase, um, that's where I actually interned at Puma. And that was thanks to ESMT because they organized a headquarter visit. And it was, I think, allowed for about 15 students. I had signed up, come to Puma for a day and took advantage of the connections I could make while I was there. Um, really got along well with HR and they were organizing the event. And yeah, because of that, I was able to apply for a position, kind of um, network. I would say that's a huge word. I think that gets thrown around in ESMT, but it's it's very accurate because I was able to network there, which I wouldn't have been able to do, I think, without that experience. And that helped me get that internship. And then that internship helped me get my junior position. So it kind of was like a domino effect. So yes, and then I also met my best friends that I've ever had <laughs> in, in, in ESMT. And those, um, those closest friends as well are who I did my SIP project with. The Social Impact Project is a pro bono consultancy project that ESMT offers directly after we finish our courses and right before we start our master's thesis. And this is a one month period that allows us to apply everything that we've learned into a real life scenario. So you can work with colleagues of your choice, so as small of a group or as large of a group as you want. And also you get to work with an organization of your choice. So um, as far as the organization goes, you can choose whatever organization you want, or you can use one from the previous year that needs maybe an additional, additional help on top of what the previous students did. And yes, that's the social impact project in a, in a little sum up. So I worked with three other girls in our master's in management program. It's Virginia Bossy, Clara Langer, and Michaela Andrioli. And we decided to work together because we had similar goals maybe on what we seeked out of the social impact project. So we, we were really um, women focused. So we wanted to support a women led organization and our kind of tagline when we were trying to find something was women empowering women. So that was our main goal. So as long as we were able to align on what we seeked out of the project or what we tried to contribute and gain um, was kind of shared. That's how we we won kind of met together. And also we were very close friends in the program. Then um, we decided to work for an organization known as Raise Your Voice St. Lucia. And they are based out of um, St. Lucia and Castries, so in the Caribbean. And this organization advocates for and on behalf of women and children who are subject to domestic slash gender-based violence in St. Lucia. Um, and this is a very, very large issue in St. Lucia. Um, domestic violence against women and children is terrible. And this organization um, has been advocating for this cause since 2012. And it is run by a woman named Catherine Seelys. So Catherine was the woman that we had contact with throughout the duration of the project. But basically we had found this organization. We reached out to Catherine saying, hey, we have this project that we um, need to work on for our university we would be willing to offer our help for X amount of period. Um, does this something that sounds interesting to you? So she seemed very, very excited about it. So we met with her via um, a Zoom call and we knew immediately, even after a few minutes after talking with her that she needed serious help. So she has thousands of victims and she did everything primarily on her own. 
Yes, she had some help, but it was a cause that is so dear to her and so important that she really wanted to do everything on her own, but she realized that this wasn't sustainable. So we immediately um, secured this, this contract, but not contract with, with Catherine. And this was in about January, I think maybe we had secured this with Catherine. So we did it quite early on. Um, and so after we met with Catherine, we decided, okay, what exactly can we do for her? We could technically do everything because she needed help in every part of the business. So then we looked at what each skill set we could offer individually in the group. And we realized that we were each very, we could offer completely different um, assets to this project. So Michaela, for example, has an engineering background. So she's very good with um, business process management. So this is what we decided she could take over that sector um, regarding Raise Your Voice. So for that, she did, um, she completely digitalized all of the documentation processes. So she basically, Catherine had used all paper-based things uh, like paper-based waivers, um, they had the consent forms, any documentation she had was on paper, which is not feasible in today's time. So Michaela said, okay, I want to digitalize all of these onto a centralized platform. So in this case, like Google Drive. Then also Catherine's organization, so Raise Your Voice, didn't have an organizational structure because Catherine just did everything. However, she had tons of help, but no one knew exactly what they were doing. So then Michaela also defined an organizational structure and had clearly defined roles for each of the women there. So that was kind of what she took over. Then Clara did partner management. So Clara has a lot of experience um, in change management. She's very interested in how to make an organization more efficient given the health of the employees and also given the partners that the organization has. She was responsible for all of that. So she set up a LinkedIn account for Raise Your Voice because they didn't have that. And you need that to maybe make the organization more known and also to reach partners. And then she also created a pitch deck that Raise Your Voice could use to gain more partners in the future. So she created this beautiful presentation of who Raise Your Voice was, what they do, why they do it. So then Catherine could just present this to the organizations and then just see what comes out of it. Then there was me who has a lot of marketing experience. Um, so I did everything marketing and rebranding related to Raise Your Voice. So Raise Your Voice, I realized didn't have a brand identity at all. Um, so I defined it between creating a new brand logo um, and with that came brand colors and a new font that they could use. And then also redesigning and restructuring the website because the website was just a mass of text everywhere. So if someone went on the website, they would have no idea who they were. They wouldn't know how to contact Catherine. So again, that also makes a, puts a lot of work back on Catherine and the organization. So uh, we found a agency that also was looking for pro bono work. So I worked directly with this agency to create a new brand logo that reflected the domestic violence colors, um, showed them some ideas on how I wanted to reflect woman empowerment um, in this logo. Um, and then they also helped me restructure and redesign the websites. However, the website could only be redesigned given the platform that Catherine had, which was a free platform. So we had to work with, okay, very few resources um, in such a short period of time. So that was a huge learning curve, definitely. Um, and then lastly, we focused on professional trainings which was like social media strategy and then also how to train them how to actually pitch this deck to the stakeholders. Um, and this is what Virginia took care of a lot. Um, Virginia um, was basically the project manager and she's a woman of many trades. So she basically touched base on every single part of the project that we were working on, making sure that everyone was on time, everything was delivered correctly. She's also a master photographer and took all of the images that are on the website. She took personally when in St. Lucia. Um, so as you can see, yeah, we each had our own part of the project. However, we all had weekly calls every week um, and it was just really amazing. We learned a lot from each other. So um, that was basically what we tackled in the, in the project. And the end result was we were able to execute everything we wanted mostly because we were able to understand how we all worked, you know, kind of seamlessly together, but really, really awesome experience. I 
you know, I could go on about it. <laughs> At the end of the social impact project, we then create a little presentation and we present our project to um, ESMT professors and also some consultants. So like a board that we present our project to, and then they evaluate our project based on specific criteria that they have, but basically did we actually have some kind of plan? Did we make an impact as far as, did we create more efficient processes? Did I actually rebrand and market the, the organization? Um, and I feel like for them, it's more based on, was there a benefit from when we started and when we left? Um, and it's not like an A, B, C, D, E grade. It's like you pass or you fail. So did we put at least a lot of effort into this? Did we really make a contribution that was impactful? Um, and yeah, I think that was a great presentation because we, um, we are all very passionate about it. And it was very heartwarming to see all the different groups um, present and see what they did. Like one group went to Uganda and they showed what they did there. And I think it's very interesting to see how they approached it differently from us. Um, so I think overall, yeah, it's just to see that you made some kind of impact, not just emotionally, but also did you really change their organization for a sustainable time, not just for the month that I was there. For this particular project, you, what's very unique about it is the fact that it's not just you're given a set of directions on how to do something like, okay, reach out to the organization, you know, look into this part of it, look into that. You are really given a, a, a real life situation with a group of people who you've never worked with before. And you have to understand how to work with very few resources um, and deliver something in a very short period of time with a group of people that have very different working styles than you. So um, in particular, I learned how to um, basically take control of a situation that I had no previous experience in, in whatsoever um, and learn from my group members. So for example, Clara, Virginia, and Michaela, learn how they can also best contribute to my work as well. So we um, learned, okay, maybe Virginia, she's very artistic. She can help me create the brand logo. Uh, Michaela is very process oriented. She can help me digitalize all the forms that need to go on this website and put them on the website. So it's not just an I situation where you're looking into skills that I developed. You have to also look into your colleagues and say, okay, given it's such a short period of time, um, what can we do to best make this work as a team? And that was something that I'd never done before because in a group project as well, you kind of, each person is given their task and you kind of, you know, execute it on your own and you all come together at the end. Like, yeah, you cross commute, cross culturally communicate, but when you're thrown into a hectic real life situation, um, you have to really keep, keep a straight head on and also be able to professionally communicate with an organization that if you can't help them, it's really affects their, <laughs> their success in the long run. So, um, I think I really developed my leadership skills in this. Um, because I had to take control of marketing rebranding, but also allocate tasks and roles for each member in the organization. Um, and also, yeah, just how to keep a level head in, in, in a very, very, um, what could be stressful situation. How the social impact project kind of summed or wrapped up my MIM experience it showed me that the courses that we actually had taken applied to real life situations because I remember maybe in my bachelor's, you're like, oh, I would never use that course in real life or something. But truly with the MIM program, everything that we had learned, we had actually done in the social impact project um, because the MIM program really kind of trains you to work in the real world. It offers a lot of practical experience. It offers a lot of group work where you have to understand not only how to communicate with others, but also how to um, execute the tasks that are given to you. And so this SIP project really made me realize um, how beneficial the MIM program was for me because if I had done the social impact project previously before I had started the MIM program, I would have had no idea how to 
effectively do it, honestly. Um, the MIM program offered, you know, a lot of leadership courses, but also a lot of strategy courses as well to, to help you understand how to um, best perform given little to no resources. And also taught you how to also um, encourage and also implement innovation within your team, which are all things that we use within the social impact project. So it really helped us, I think, tie everything together. So everything we learned was then just kind of pushed into the social impact project that um, I think helped us understand why we came to ESMT. The Social Impact Project is incredibly unique because not only are you applying what you learned, but you're doing it for an organization that truly needs it. You're not just helping someone that, okay, could make their processes more efficient, but seeing Catherine's reaction at the end of our program, I mean, she was in tears. They were so grateful for our help because they said they you know, tried to get consultants in the past, but they cost thousands and thousands of dollars and they desperately need the help, but they could not get it. And so to be able to put all of your skills to the test for someone that could really use it is a really heartwarming experience and something that definitely changes your life and also the organization's life that you, that you work with. Because yes, after the program, we get full-time jobs and we apply our learnings to a position that you get paid for and you know can afford consultants but for this it's a very unique experience where you know your your skills can really be put to to good and that that is what i think is most unique <laughs>